Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. How many came tonight expecting a miracle? Expecting a miracle. You need a miracle and you're in expectation that God is going to bring a miracle on your behalf. That he is going to supply that need, that miracle that you have need of. Hallelujah. If you're in expectation, then God is there to meet the expectation. When you place a demand on your heavenly Father, a demand on that anointing, a demand on that supply, whether it's hearing a word of faith, whether it's, whether it's coming to a, a deeper knowledge and a revelation of Jesus Christ, or if it's a physical miracle or financial miracle, or whatever the miracle is, when you press in and say, Father, I'm here tonight to meet with you. I'm here tonight to meet with you. Father, you see this need, Lord. You see this hunger. You see this desire of my heart. Oh, Father. I thank you. I thank you, Father, that you're a God that hears. Your ears are open to the prayers and the cry of your people, to your children. And you are here to meet every need according to your abundant riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Not according to the eye that we, that we see through, our understanding, human ability, but according to his riches and glory, the full supply the full supply hallelujah 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 how many came with the sacrifice of praise to offer up to the one you love the one you love the one you love the one you love have you loved on him tonight have you poured out your heart loving on him are you standing back there saying the stones can cry out because I'm tired? Are you pouring yourself out on worshiping Him? Hallelujah. We say, oh, Father, I need, I need, I need, I need. And He says, come. As, as David was singing, He's drawing near us or we're drawing near to Him. When we draw near to Him, He draws nigh to us. He draws nigh to us. That's his word. His word endures forever and ever. Not one little bit of it will fail. Not one little bit of his word will fail. And as we draw near and as we pour out ourselves upon him, he is just standing there waiting to open the floodgates of heaven and pour himself out on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, when you bring that sacrifice of praise, when you bring that offering that you offer up, it because it's a sweet, it's a sweet incense before the throne room. That worship, that prayer, that praise. You know, as we're singing, we're not singing a song to, okay, I like that melody and that sounds really great. We're offering up a praise unto the Father. We're offering up worship. We're offering up a prayer. We're offering up our hearts. We're offering up the love and the passion that we have in our hearts and our souls before Him. And when we offer up, He's breathing it in right before the throne room. It's coming right before His throne room. Realize that, people. That incense comes out of your heart and begins to ascend to the Father. And He can't help. He can't help but to pour Himself out upon you. When you're worshiping Him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your being, with all of your very, when you're not holding anything back, when you're not allowing the busyness of the day, the trials, the tribulations, the temptations, the tiredness, when you're not allowing anything to hold you back from pouring out yourself upon Him, He will not hold back from pouring Himself out on you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. How many tonight would like to receive a special grace from the Father? A special grace from the Father. You know, you have to take a hold and press in for the graces. And there's, there's principles. There's principles that we follow in God. On these, on, the, on, these, on the gifts and the grace 
that God bestows upon us. Hallelujah, Jesus. So tonight, you know, as you worship, it, it, it takes you over into a deeper realm of glory. It, you know, when you come in and you just put it all aside and you just go, forget about it. Forget about it. I mean, there's all kinds of things that the enemy wants to keep in front of your face to keep you from focusing on worshiping the one you love. And you just come in and you go, you walk past that door and you just make up your mind, I'm putting it all aside, I'm going to forget about it. I come to meet. I come into this place to meet with the greatest royalty in all creation, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that created all things. I come into this place to meet with him tonight. I come into this place because I am in great need of him. And so I come, I come before him in this unity of the body to pour myself out as an offering as an alabaster box of worship before him out of this loving relationship. Oh, just think about, think about, think about what he's done for you. Think about what he's done for you. When all of the floods of this, of, of this life begin to come down upon you and the enemy would try to distract you with stuff, and it's all just stuff because it's going to burn. It's all going to burn up because if it isn't of the Spirit and by the Spirit, and if it doesn't come right from the throne of God, it's all going to burn. It's works. It's things that are going to burn. So when the enemy comes to distract you, think about what God has done for you. And then just worship him. Think about his goodness, his goodness that he stretched forth upon you and how good he's been to you. Think about when you were driving down the 15 or the 5 and how God protected you and kept you. I tell you what, it's, it's a miracle every time you drive down these freeways and make it from, to your destination. It's just a miracle. I think so much about how God's so good to me, how he keeps me, he protects me. Think about what he's done. Get your mind off of the stuff that's going to burn and get your mind in on the eternal things. Set your affections on the things that are above and not on the things of this earth. They're distractions. Hallelujah, we don't need them. But as you come into this place and you worship him, you are opening up. You're like plowing the ground, getting ready. As the word of the Lord comes forth, you're getting ready. You're getting this fallow ground ready for the seed of the almighty God to be implanted in you to bring the change that you need. If you come in here, mm, oh God, you know I love you. I mean, you're going to go out with, mm, Oh, God, I, you know, I love you. You know? You're going to go out the way you came in if you don't come in and say, Oh, Father, I'm in desperate need of you. I'm in desperate need of you. Lord, I don't want to stay the same. I don't want to just keep going on like I've been going on. It's been good up until this point, but I want to go deeper because you said there's more. There's more. There's more. There's more. There's more, Lord, and I want more, and I'm not going ha- to settle for anything less than more. I'm not going to settle for anything less than more and more and more. Uh, woo! Jesus, I'm not going to let circumstances rule. I'm not going to allow disappointment and discouragement. I'm not going to allow those demons. Now name them for what they are. I'm not going to allow those demons to rule me, to blindside me, and to lead me over there like the children of Israel that we all think were crazy. And go around and around the mountain because they open themselves up to the lies of the enemy. I'm not going around the mountain. I'm not going to hang on to this thing. Now, I'm nipping it in the bud right now. One of my mother's saying she had about 150,000 of them. But I'm going to nip it in the bud right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to press past this thing because my supply comes from heaven. My supply comes from heaven. My supply comes from heaven. His all, his all sufficiency is supplied to me 
Oh, hallelujah. What he gave me when he died for me at Calvary. He opened up heaven and he said, Now, children, I am bringing to you the will of my testament. Now this is your inheritance. Now come close and I'll tell you what you get to receive. Come close and I'll tell you what your inheritance is. It's written down right here for you. I mean, how many, how many uh, would be at your parents' will reading? Are your grandparents, if you knew you were on the will and they were multi-trillionaires, and you knew you were in that will, how many would be listening closely, closely to what you were going to receive? I'm going to tell you the one that owns it all, the one that created it all, put you in his will. And the blood of Jesus Christ paid for your inheritance. Now you open it up and you look at what you received. You look at what he's given you. All that the Father has is mine, said Jesus. And I give it to you. I give it to you. Ask what you will and it shall be done. It shall be done. All you've got to do is believe. Now, if that will was open up and it read, Charity, your grandfather is leaving. You didn't even know you had this grandfather. And he's leaving you a billion dollars, his mansion, and his Mercedes and Lamborghini. I mean, Charity would be jumping up and down. We'd hear about it. I mean, we, she wouldn't be able to hold back because she didn't even know that she was going to be able to receive anything from any grandparent she didn't realize had something like that. We'd hear about it. Look what we have received from him. Look at what we have received. He owns it all. And he's just waiting. He's just waiting for you to be desperate enough to say, I'll receive it. I'll receive it. I'll receive it. If Charity took that and she went home and she never showed back up for the check and she never showed back up to get the address to the mansion that she didn't even know about, she wouldn't receive it. She went home all excited, but she didn't believe nothing. If she didn't go back, and take possession of it. Don't just look at it, possess it. Possess it, receive it. It belongs to you. Of his fullness, we have all received. And grace for grace, John chapter one, verse 16. Of his fullness, of his fullness, Do you understand the fullness of God? Do you even comprehend what the Spirit is saying? What He is crying? Of His fullness. I don't think anybody here believes it. Of His fullness we have received. And grace for grace. And grace for grace. Now that leads me to a grace that I've been looking upon and gazing upon that Father wants us all to receive. He wants us all to receive of this grace. And I want you to look real quick with me. We've got, oh, hallelujah, we're going to have a glorious meeting tonight (laughs) because the PD's coming. Pastor Daniel, not the police department, because that would just be boring. But we're going to have a man anointed of the Father to come and minister here in a minute. But I tell you what I know, Father wants to impart to you this grace. And he is saying, come and hear. Come and hear. Come and receive. Did you dig up the fallow ground? Did you come and pour yourself out on him? Because, see, there's, there's divine opportunities in God. And if you're not ready to receive, sometimes you miss out. So I tell you what, if you come in with any stuff, just burn it up right now. Don't wait to the, great, to the um, judgment seat of Christ 
for it to get burned up. Let it just burn up right now. Just put it aside right now. Ask the Lord to forgive you and, and press in, press in. Put a man on the anointing right now to receive this grace. And we're going to look at, it's so bright up here. I'm going to try to come down here. I think it might be cooler too. And we're going to look in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we're in great expectation of what you want to do here tonight. We're in great expectation, Father, of what you want to do in your people, the impartation that you want to give each and every one of us. Now, Father, I, I, I just thank you. I thank you that your people reach out. They reach out, they take a hold, and they grab a hold of this grace, and they say, I am not going to do without that grace. I'm not going to do without that grace. I want it. It's mine. It's mine. You know, some ministers come up, and they pass out their they pass out their. Their, their stuff, and they ask who wants it. And I mean, some people just nearly jump out of their seat, raising their hands, going, you got to give me that. I want it. I need that. Well, you know what? If you would take a hold of the Word, you wouldn't even have to need that product so much. If you would just take a hold of what He's done. Now, we're going to look. We're going to gaze upon this grace that He's given us. Hallelujah. In, in um, I'm going to have to be able to lay this down because I don't have on the lap. But in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, let's just, um, let's look at the Macedonians. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Okay, Macedonia, there was a special grace, look at this, the grace that was placed upon Macedonia. Okay, what grace is this, and how did they receive it? If you want a grace, you've got to look at it, gaze upon it, be hungry for it, be desperate for it, take a hold of it, let it go on the inside of you, and participate to be able to receive it. Participate with it. You can have exercise equipment out in your garage. But if you don't ever go get on that exercise equipment, and it's not going to do you any good. I'm just putting this at a practical place. If you don't use what you have, if you don't take a hold of this grace and apply it, if you don't hear it, and see, the hearing is all spiritual. It's all by you saying, I'm desperate. And so you take a hold of it. You, there's action in it. Okay, so we're going to look at this grace that was given to the church of Macedonia. How that in a great trial of affliction, okay, so Macedonia is in a great trial of affliction. The abundance of their joy, they're in a great trial of affliction, but they have an abundance of joy to do what? <clears throat> and in their deep poverty, oh, they're not rich, in deep poverty. Now, it wasn't spiritual poverty because they, you're not going to have such a great grace if you got spiritual poverty. These people had a hold of the things of God. There was a reason that they were impoverished at this time. Well, I'll hold on that. I'll come back to it. In their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality them being liberal. So they're in, they're in poverty, but there's, they're liberal in what? What are they liberal in? For to their power I bear record, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves, beyond what they had, beyond what they, they even needed, they were willing. They were willing. Willing is a very important part to this. A willing. You know, and they got joy. They got willingness. They're liberal. And I don't mean like the Democrats. I mean in giving. Praying us. Oh, for to their power I bear record. And beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Praying 
us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. They first gave them their own selves. Does that remind you of something? Does that remind you as if we give ourselves first to the kingdom of God? We give our all to the Lord. You know, like the rich young ruler, he came and he was just like, I got this one. You know, I have, you know, I've had an easy life. I've, I've had a, a very wealthy family. I've had everything I've, I've ever needed financially. Um, I've kept the law. I've done all these things. I, I pressed in to be obedient to the law of God. And he's like, I got this one. And he comes to Jesus. And he says, what must I do? And to shorten it, Jesus looks deep in his heart. And he knows what's got a hold of him. He knows what has captivated his heart. He knows that he wants to add Jesus to the collection. He wants to add what Jesus has to his collection of religion, not fellowship. Because what's gripped his heart is money. So Jesus, so Jesus looks at him and he says, okay, you've done all these things. Now go and sell all that you have, all that you have, all that you have, and give it to the poor. All of it, all of it. And the rich young ruler that was totally captivated by what he had, by riches. Money is the root of all evil. Why? Why? Because there's power in money. Money enables you to fulfill the desires of the flesh or to seek first the kingdom of heaven. There's a choice in that. There's a choice in that. And money is the true tr test. It is a true part of the test. Are you really captivated by him? Is everything you, does everything you have and everything you are belong to him? Or does it belong to you? When finances, when money, when that paycheck that you're used to having when it comes in or the paycheck you're not used to having, uh, the abundance comes in, do you say, okay, Father, you have put me as steward over this. What do you want me to do with it? Do you say that? Do you say, Father, here I am. Take all of me. I pour out myself upon you, Jesus. You put this in my hand. Now I am going to go make sure that I get this and this and this and this. Oh, and by the way, Father, um, I'll make sure that I put the tithe in the offering because, you know, covenant with you and I don't want to mess up the covenant. Or is it really his? Is it, does it belong to him? Do you say, here I am, but the money's in your hand. Take all of me. Where your heart is, there will be treasures also. Where your heart... Are you treasures in heaven? Are you treasures in heaven? Are they, all, are they tied up in this earth? Where are you? Where, where are your thoughts? Where do you put most of your time? You need to step back and look at that and say, Father, I want to abound under eternal riches. I want to abound under those things that are not going to have moths and rust and dust, dust corrupt them and be gone tomorrow and then I just stand before you with a bunch of works that most of them get burned up because I was seeking my own life. I was too busy with me. Boy, it got quiet in here. They gave themselves first. Insomuch that we desired Titus that as he had begun so he would also finish in you the same grace also, so Titus is he's over in Corinth, and he's teaching them about this grace that the Macedonians had received. He's showing them that there is a, an ability and a supply here that they want to connect up to. 
And it's like the anointing. And if anybody's ever flown in the anointing and you reach out and you pray for somebody, I mean, I hope most people in here have flown in the anointing and reached out and prayed for somebody and you just feel yourself as a connection. It comes in you and goes out of you. Now, when people stand up in the line and they're not receiving, it goes, it goes in you, to them, bounces off, hits you, and then you want to fall over. But it comes in you because you're participating with the anointing. Because you are saying, here I am, God. I am willing to step out in this arena. Not because I have any special ability. Not because I'm somebody that everybody else isn't. But because I'm willing to step out here. I'm willing to say, here I am. Here I am. I remember, you know, because I've told you before, I didn't really like women preachers, and so I couldn't be one. And But then the Lord's calling me, you know, and I, and I see this need, and, and so I just finally step out, out and say, here I am, Lord. I'm like, if a rooster, God can use a rooster, and he can use a donkey, he can surely use a woman. And so I said, here I am, Lord. And then the supply comes to meet the need. He wants to supply through us continually. He wants us to just be his, his supply route to the earth. And he, he uses us to get his work done on earth. So do you want to be that person that's used to, to, to work a miracle? <laughs> do you want to be that person that is to supply the need? It just comes in and goes out. It comes in. Father just can pour himself out on you because he knows you're not going to hold it and be like a Scrooge and hide over in the corner and keep it all to yourself. Stuff it in your mattress and then you die. Or a fire, fire takes your house and it all burns up. I mean, David has an uncle, a very wealthy uncle. And, you know, his, his family, aunts and parents and and they all had money to leave him. And before that, he had his business, and he made a lot of money. And they just held it so tightly. You would have thought they were the poorest people on the planet, too. You know, they go to paint their house, and they, they um, take the paint, and they do one can of water to one can of paint to spread out the paint. It was like you couldn't even tell it was hardly painted. They shared a bath towel so they didn't use up too much water when they washed. And it wasn't because of saving water. It wasn't the California mentality. They ate beans, bought their, you know, they would eat, make a pot of beans, eat them for a week to save money. They were millionaires. They were millionaires. Okay, and they weren't asking Father what to do with the money. Now, if you're doing that because you want to give, now you are laying up treasures in heaven. But they were doing it because they wanted to keep everything for themselves. I absolutely do not know why. They bought all their stuff at yard sales. They wore the same clothes all week. It's saved on water. That's where living to yourself can so deceive you, so blind you. Here they have all the riches. They could have at least been a blessing to somebody. They weren't a blessing to nobody but themselves and lived in absolute misery when they had all of this supply to them. Mm, 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 mm. Sounds like most Christians. We, of his fullness we have received in grace for grace. And we close the book and never show up to passionately receive that inheritance and to walk it out and to live it. We don't take hold of the grace that God's given us. Macedonia took a hold of it. They sent Titus to teach the Corinthians how to take a hold of this grace. How to let the supply flow through them that the work of the Lord could abound unto all righteousness. Hallelujah. We have to just read this. The word of God is so beautiful. Therefore, as you abound in everything, what do you abound in? Everything, everything God has is yours to abound in. In faith, in utterance, in knowledge, in diligence, in love. And I tell you what, i got to stop right there. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples by the love you have one for another. Religion is mean. Relationship 
there's an abundance of love flowing out of you. My prayer has been, oh God, baptize me and this church in the glory, the liquid glory of your love. That all men might know that we are your disciples by the love. You know, a lot of people look at people from other countries. I notice this. I know the spiritual atmosphere. They look at other people from other countries that come into America. And, and, here, and they're supposed to have a missionary heart. And they look at them and they go, why are you in our country? Go home. Or they have a bad attitude or, or, you know, to, towards them. Or they're all worried about, are they going to be terrorists? And is that a terrorist? Is there a terrorist? Here a terrorist? There a terrorist? Every, you know, God placed them here for you to minister to because he loves them. He placed them here for you to reach out. See if the love of God's flowing out of you. It compels you. It compels you. It compels you to spill out on them. You can't sit home in your cl closed, sealed house and let the, the work of the Lord lay waste. You're compelled. Ha <laughs> ha, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father, to let that love flow. You can't hold it back. You can't cram it back in your mouth. You just, you got to run over. You know, because all of this, all that I'm talking about, it's about souls. It's about souls. What if every dollar you placed in the offering meant a soul? If you were saying, Lord, and you know, so many people want to use the offering, they hear all these teaching messages and they are on giving and they want to hear it, use it as a get rich quick scheme. It ain't going to work. It's all about relationship. It's all about you pouring your heart completely out before the Father. You want to understand blessing? Riches are hooked up with blessing. Go into Deuteronomy chapter 28. Look at Isaac, who had the blessing and he sowed in famine. And in famine, in the famine time when everybody else has got dirt, dust, blowing, no water. He sows and he reaps a hundredfold in the same year. He had the blessing on him. Why did he have the blessing? You need to go study out blessing because that's a whole other message and I can be here a long time preaching on blessing. And I want to stay over here on this grace, this grace. I want you to take this. Say, Father, I'm going to take this. I'm going to receive my inheritance right now. I am going to receive of this riches right now. Whatever you have need of, also, you grab a hold of it with the word of God and you say, I'm going to receive of the inheritance. <laughs> oh, Jesus, there's such, such complete for everything we have need of inheritance for us to receive if we will take a hold of it. You know, like, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that. I hear that, boy, that, that excites me. I, I can go through the roof because I have looked and I've gazed upon Psalms 103 so much. Forget not all his many benefits. Your benefit package, your insurance, while the insurance program of the world is going belly up, your insurance package, your benefits are there. Who forgives all of your iniquities? Who heals all of your diseases? Who crowns your head with loving kindness and tender mercies? Oh, hallelujah. I tell you, it's enough to shout about. I don't even know how anybody can receive unless you shout a little bit. You gotta be excited. Woo! Hallelujah! About your inheritance. <laughs> oh, have you ever watched Price is Right? Some of those people come down there like they just won five million dollars. And they ain't even won nothing yet. They're just getting in line to try to win. And then we sit in church. Mm, I'm tired. I'm sleepy. <laughs> when you're getting ready, if you open up your heart to receive all of his fullness and grace for grace. I don't want one of you to go home without this grace tonight. Not one person leave this place without receiving this grace. Not one person. This is powerful. This right here 
increases you in the kingdom of God to lay up souls for the kingdom, to lay up eternal riches for the kingdom of God. And then all these things that you have need of will be added unto you. Don't you know that the Father takes care of all of his creation? If he takes care of the birds, if he takes care of the sparrows, if he makes sure everything's taken care of, how much more? How much more his children? How much more? How much more his children? Thank you, Jesus. Who? Okay, so, and in all diligence and in love, that liquid love of the Father, that <laughs> makes you kiss your enemy, not shoot them, not be mad at them, but just put your arms around them and love them like Jesus does. Love them like he does. Love them like how he died on the cross for them when we were yet his enemies. Christ died. He died for us. Do you love the people that aggravate you that much? Then if you don't, you need to pray that the Father will pour out his liquid love upon you, that you will love your enemies like Jesus loves them, that you will love the person that you don't know because they're about ready to fall off in a devil's hell. And the love of God, the love of God is willing to say, look, buddy, I, I know you might not like what I say, and you might think, oh, it's just religious, but you need Jesus. You need Jesus. He'll change your life. You won't be so miserable anymore because I tell you, the people that are all around you that don't know Jesus are very miserable. They're trying to be happy with what they have, and they're, and, and they're reaching out, and they're trying to take a hold of something, the next thing that's going to make them happy, and they obtain it, and it never makes them happy. It's just empty, filthy rags. And all the time you sit there with the riches and the glory of heaven on the inside of you and you don't open your mouth, you need to say, Father, baptize me in that liquid love. <laughs> baptize me in the fire of the Holy Ghost that all men will know that I am your disciple by the love that I have. The love to speak the truth to a needy and a dying world. And I keep getting off of this grace a little bit on that, but I know Father is saying that too. Tonight, I mean, because it's all part of the grace. It is. It's all part of the grace. It's all part of receiving completely what he has for us. So anyway, taking a hold of this, I'm going to read a couple of more verses. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, <laughs> he had all of heaven. He had all of heaven, yet he became poor for our sakes. <laughs> for our sakes he became poor, that through his poverty he might make us all heirs and joint heirs with him. He left heaven with everything and came to earth and had nothing. Stuff on the earth didn't move him because he didn't live for here, he lived for eternity. How many, is, many of us are living for eternity? Are we living for eternity or are we living for here? Hallelujah. What's got a hold of our heart? And I'm going to just skip over to chapter 9. Just grab this because I want, I want Daniel to come up quickly. But this I say, nobody be in a hurry because, you know, we don't know what all God's going to do tonight. And we want to receive everything that he has for us. We come here to receive from heaven. Now you press in to take a hold and receive. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. Keys, keys here. I'm giving you keys. I'm giving you keys to your mansion. I'm passing out keys to your brand new car. I'm passing them out. I'm passing out keys to a grace that will cause you to abound unto eternal riches. Take a hold of these keys. Take them. Take them. Possess them tonight. Possess this grace. Possess this. But he that sows sparingly shall reap sparingly, and he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. He that gives and pours it out on Jesus, brings that alabaster box of worship, brings it to the Father, and says, here, here it is, Lord. Bountifully you will receive. This is the key to move forward in this grace. Are you ready to move forward in this grace? Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Take it. 
Come on, let's take this. Every man according as he is purposed in his heart. See, because the Lord wants your heart connected to it. He doesn't want you coming up here going, oh, Lord, how am I going to make it? I mean, the widow with the two mites, she was like captivated, captivated by his love. She was confident that he would take care of her. She grabbed a hold of principles or she would not have been able to sow those two mites as you've purposed in your heart to give it, give him all of it, all of your heart, all of it in worship, in that offering, in the offering of your life, in the offering of your pocketbook. Your pocketbook is connected with your heart probably more than anything else. Because if we're not flowing in the spirit, the prince and the power of the air, and all the stuff that moves around us is all about me, 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 my, my, my. What can I obtain? How can I have as much as the next door neighbor or the, my friends or what, blah, 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 blah. All earthly will all burn. It will all burn. It will burn. Like David's uncle, he'll die and leave it to somebody and won't even enjoy any of it. Every man according as he's purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. God loves. God loves. Take all of that. God, this is a principle. Take all of this. God loves. When he loves, he pours out. God loves. He's taking special note. He's leaning over looking. God loves a cheerful giver. One that is excited and exuberant. One that comes to worship him. One that offers up his only son like the father did. Like Abraham did when father said, I want you to take Isaac and offer him up. He did not go talk to Sarah. That was one offering Abraham gave that Sarah was not going to be connected to. Because she had to try to talk him out of it. But he rose up early in the morning and he went to offer that sacrifice because he believed God. He believed that God, after he sacrificed, Isaac would raise him up because he was the promise. And he believed in the promise. He wasn't second-guessing God or he wasn't trying to talk himself out of having, receive all that God had given for him to lay it on the altar for it to all be gone because God had promised that as the stars of heaven, so would his seed be through Isaac. He believed him. I'm trying to get through this quickly. And God is able to make all grace, all grace, this grace, what grace? This grace that the Macedonians received, that Titus is teaching to the Corinthians. In the reason that the Macedonians at that time were in great poverty was because they gave. And you're like, give yourself into poverty? Are you kidding? Hold up. A special grace there that abounded. And they got so caught up in this giving that they gave themselves poor. But it didn't end there. It didn't end there. Because what did he say to the rich young ruler? What did he say to the disciples after the rich young ruler left? He said, if he would have anybody that does, that gives all that you have, that forsakes all that you have, you will receive a hundredfold in the next life and in this life. In this life and in the life to come, both. Because God just multiplies everything. He breathes on it and he multiplies it. So this is a grace that you want to take a hold of. See, the Macedonians, when they started out, they gave themselves poor. And then they found a way to give again because they had taken a hold of this realm, this glorious realm. And in their poverty, they found a way to dig deep and give more and meet the need that was needed. And so they received a grace. And then from that point on, if you look at what the Scripture's saying right here, they became that channel of that anointing of where Father could let those finances just come flowing in 
so their righteousness could increase. Because right here it is, it says it. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having, you always, if you get this grace, you will always have sufficiency in all things, and you may abound to every good work. Every time there's a need in the kingdom of God, you're abounding towards giving to it because he will give you all sufficiency. Now, does the word say it? I mean, are you looking at it with me? I am not reading this and making it up out of some kind of magazine or something. I'm reading this out of the living word of God. He will give you all sufficiency. Believe him. Believe him. Believe him. Take a hold of this grace. And all things may abound to every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remains forever. Now, he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for your food and multiplies your seed sown. And I, I don't like to run through this so quickly, but you can see, he is going to give you, he's going to cause the sufficiency to come upon you to where you can keep giving and giving and giving and giving. And then it says right here, your needs are all going to be taken care of. He's going to give seed to the sower, and, he is, and he's going to multiply that. And he's going to minister bread for your food, take care of all that you have need of, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. See, this is eternal riches that you're laying up in heaven. And it comes back here on earth, but your, fo- your heart's not drawn away with it. Your heart is caught up in the kingdom of heaven And how many souls can I reach for Jesus? How many souls are you praying for right now? What is your number? What is your number for now? What is your number for next week? What is your number for next this year? What is your number for next the year after that? In 10 years, how many souls do you want to see saved? Right now, I'm focused on this year. And the Lord gave me a number that kind of blew me away. It just came out of my mouth. But that is what we want to focus on. When our focus is there, all the other stuff comes as we're we're just running after the kingdom. So we don't have to have our minds caught up in the worldly system of go to work, make the money, have our little house, have our little, you know, my little nest and, and move on. But we can be caught up and just run wide open for the kingdom because we know Father's going to take care of our needs. And we find ourselves not even needing a job because the supply comes miraculously continually because we're running after the kingdom. Amen. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. Now, what is it saying? You take this grace and that enrichment in all bountifulness, which causes through us thanksgiving to God. And I could just go on ministering on this, but right now I want every person in this place to take a hold of this grace. Grab this thing, run with it. And I want you right now to just say, okay, Father, not, you know, what am I able to do, but okay, Father, I want to come and worship you, and what do you want me to do? I'm coming right now to worship you. What would you have me do? Now just take a moment and ask the Father what he wants you to do, and if you get two numbers, put both of them together and add them together and give it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Father wants you to receive this grace tonight. There's so much in the Word of God that if we will apply these principles to our life, they will multiply in us. You just look upon this. You gaze upon us. You get a hold of it. You t- you, tonight, tonight, you take this grace home with you. Now, Ruthanna or David or somebody is going to come and just worship the Lord, and you guys are going to come... And as you worship the Lord, singing and offering up that incense of prayer and worship before Him, you come and you worship the Lord and receive. Love of God compels me. The love of God.
Thank you, Father, for your glorious anointing. I want everybody to stand up. Raise your hands towards heaven now for the glory of Jesus Christ. The presence of our mighty living God is here in this place. I have one desire, and that is to meet with my Savior, Jesus Christ. That is to bring glory and honor to my Father. And that is to represent the Holy Spirit in everything that I do and everything that I say. Father, my heart is yours. My life is yours. I'm here to bring worship and praise, glory and honor to your name. You're so good, Father. You're so good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, I want to be of no earthly good. I want to be useful only for the things of heaven, the realms of the supernatural. Father, I thank you that you raise up in this place a people that re will represent heaven. Father, everywhere we go, we'll be compelled by your love to represent you, to speak your word, to see through your eyes, to go in your stead, Lord Jesus, going everywhere, proclaiming this gospel, this liberation, this message of salvation, taking it to all nations. Lord Jesus, going everywhere just as you did, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out demons, proclaiming liberty to the captives. Father, for truly this love compels us to go. This love compels us to go deeper, to fall deeper in love with you. This love compels us to go to reach the lost. This love compels us to go to our knees in prayer. This love compels us. We love you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful, Father. You're so wonderful. Mighty, mighty presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That song wrecks me every time. It wrecks me, and I love it. I love it. Because it, it's... It's a prayer just simply set to music, right? It captures, it captures, for me, it captures many, many services and many touches from God. The way God touched me, he can touch me like no one else. Whew. He's so precious, Holy Spirit. It's such an honor to represent Jesus. It's just such an honor. Tumbling. <laughs> that God would purpose to use us. That God would purpose to speak through our mouth, to move through our hands, to see through our eyes. Incredible. Incredible. Father, your, your presence is overwhelming. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you're so good, Father. You're so good. You're so good. You're so good. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, I don't have a lot to say. My best friend is here with me, and I feel great. And I apologize for being a little selfish, but I am lost away in the realms of glory. And I invite you to come and do the same, because the realm of heaven is just right there. It's just right there. It's just right there. And with just the smallest bit of hunger, the simplest amount of sincerity, that just says, Jesus, I want to know you. Holy Spirit, be close to me. Father, show me your face. <laughs> he rushes in. He rushes in every time. He rushes in. He rushes in with his glory. You're so precious, Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh, you're glorious. You're so glorious, Jesus. The Father is here right now to meet every need, to supply everything that you could possibly want. Just lift your hands up towards heaven with a hungry heart. Put aside everything else. 
put aside tiredness, put aside any, any issues, anything, because the Father is here. The Father is here. The Father is here to meet every need. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your glory, Lord Jesus. So wonderful. The love of God compares me. The love of God compels me. The love of God compels me. The love of God. here because I just I feel like uh, God wants to do some special things he wants to he wants to touch you and please don't ever come to church and not and not feel the presence of Jesus don't ever come and not be completely overwhelmed with the presence of God because it's always available he's always there he's always there to fill and to meet every need and that's hey that's why I come to church that's why I live this life that's why I live this life of Christ to be filled and satisfied. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I think, I think, because I know there's some issues and challenges and hardships and work and life, whatever it is, that, that, can, that can create a bit of a barrier and create a little bit of a stronghold in, when, when you come into the presence of God. So what I want to do tonight is simply encourage you in this one thing. Build an altar in your life. Let there be prayer and prevailing prayer in your life that is, that is every day takes you to a place of interaction and communion with the Father. That's just so precious. It's so precious. One of the things I've been reading and studying is uh, Sister Jeannie Wilkerson. Her, uh, her book, Contact with God, really you know, captivates who she was as an intercessor you know, as someone that could touch heaven to see into the realms of the spiritual, see into the realms of the supernatural, and really stand in the gap to cry out for a generation, to see things take place and transpire in a, in a natural realm, but that was only done because of a supernatural realm. Does that make sense? There's things that we can change in the natural. There, there's tide we can turn in the natural because of that, that supernatural inspiration and that supernatural connection. God has appointed that each and every one of us stand in the gap, stand for our nation. Our nation is not in a very good state right now because we have proclaimed that we are not a godly nation. We have tried to remove God from everything, be it work, school, monuments, politics, whatever, and tried to pull that out. Well, we're removing the blessing. We're removing everything that we are established on. So where is the voice to fill that void. Because I'll tell you this, Satan is crying very loudly. Satan is interceding on a very high level. You can see it as it is spewed out in every form of, of media and every outlet across the billboards, on the radio stations, the TV, whatever. Where is God's people? 
Where are God's people? Where are they crying out and interceding and standing in the gap, representing and crying out with that voice and fervent cry of holiness and righteousness and saying, Father, this nation belongs to you. We, your people, belong to you. I'll challenge you to step up in the, in, in the, the time that you spend in prayer and really fervent prayer. It's a labor but it is a labor that, that brings you into a rest in that fellowship with Christ Jesus. That prayer of the Holy Spirit where there's deep wells, where it's not just a shallow trickle of a prayer, where it's not a surfacey prayer, but there is that deep longing, there's that deep cry, there's that fervent, fervent voice of the Holy Spirit that intercedes. Because there truly is many things that we need to intercede for. First and foremost, for our lives. The one person I will guarantee I will see get to heaven is myself. And I will reach as many per- people as I can around me. But we have to realize that what God has purposed to do with each and every one of our lives can only be fully realized, can only be fully lived out if we will get serious about laboring for the kingdom. We work long hours. We do many things. We put our full efforts into achieving earthly goals. That's great. But where are the people that are willing to labor for the kingdom, to press in and intercede behind closed doors? It's great if you can come up and you can give a a five-minute raw prayer. But where are the people that would long to touch God in that secret place, in the chambers that no one else can see, that deep cry of intercession, to passionately pursue the things of God, to realize that prayer does, in fact, change things. Prayer is the key. It is the voice of the Holy Spirit as we cry out with with deep groanings. That voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We have to press into this this realm of prayer. And that's something that that God has just been speaking to me. I want to go deeper in prayer. I want to commune with the Father. I want to touch the realms of heaven. For one purpose and one purpose only. to To know the Father more. To know Jesus Christ, to be so close. I want the Holy Spirit to be so close to me. So close. If he starts, if I feel it like he's, I'm like, no, 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 no. Holy Spirit, I need you close. I need you close. I need you close. Be close. And he always is there. He's always there. He's always there. Now, if I pull away and I'm off doing my own thing, and I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to come be close in that, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. He is in a very sacred realm. He's in a very holy realm, and he demands that we live in that sacred realm. That holiness, the gift of holiness that I have is a free gift. Just as salvation was a free gift, done nothing to obtain holiness. I have no holiness of myself. All my holiness is found in Jesus Christ. I'm dead, and my life is hid with Christ in God. What you see, the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. The invitation is always there. Come and know the Father. Come and be interacting with Jesus like you never have before because that is the life. Out of that interaction, out of that fellowship, we then just pours out. The ministry is so easy. The example is so easy. The love compels us. The love of God compels us to not walk by someone that we see that needs prayer, to not to not, not reach out to that person that needs to hear the message because the love of God truly compels us to go. So if you find yourself in a state that is distant, aloof, not feeling the presence of God, I want to point out, you probably have a simple, simple remedy. There's There's one thing. Your prayer life might not be that strong. I was reading some of uh, Towser. This is a great quote. I'm going to read this one. I wrote it down. Just in case. The way, the way I've, God's just developed messages and, and ministering in my life. Keep standing. We're going to labor a little bit. Just a little. You want to keep playing for me? I'm almost done. I just want to keep playing. Are you guys tired? Can everybody stand up for me? Can everybody lift their hands and say, I love you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Father. I love you, Holy Spirit. I love your presence. Thank you that you are here. If we would truly acknowledge that the presence of the Almighty God is here, 
We will be willing to stand in his presence for a few minutes. There's not too many scriptures that say, come and sit down in the presence of God. It's usually a praise, a standing, a shout, a dance, a celebration. Okay? Put in a little bit. Put in a little bit. And watch how much you get out of it. God is wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to hit you with a bit of a heavy quote. Okay? This one's good. A.W. Talzer. It's fantastic. So if you're struggling in life, if you're still trying to put aside the weight of sin that does so easily beset you, this quote might apply. It is because of hasty and superficial conversation with God that the sense of sin is so weak and that no motives have power to help you to hate flee from sin as you should. Are you having problems fleeing from sin to see sin the way that God sees it, to hate it with a perfect hatred? Perhaps it is because of hasty and superficial conversation with God. Ruth likes that one. The challenge is this. The challenge is this. Can you truly converse with the Father? Can you hear the Father speak to you? Can you speak to the Father and simply pour out your heart? Pastor Brad and Amy and I, we, we've been working with the, with the little guys, teaching them prayers. I know many of you coming to the school of the Spirit. I'm teaching you how to pray the Scriptures so that you're praying the Word, that you're praying in faith. Why is this important? Why do we do it? It's for no other reason than that is the way that Father communicates with us. That's how we pour out our heart, our praise, our worship. The songs, the, my favorite songs are so simple. There's just simple prayers set to music. You know, you sing because it just, it's, there's a certain amount you can say and there's just that, you can communicate that, that affection, that love, that praise when you, can, when you say something. But when you sing it out, right, it's like that next level. You know, to be able to praise to praise, to put those prayers to praise. That's what our, our, our days, days should look like and sound like. A continual prayer and a supplication just before the Father. If you truly believe that you were created to live for Him and to worship Him, then you'll be doing it all the time. Because we were made, I truly believe that I was made to bring praise and to bring glory and honor to the Father. That's the reason for my existence. Amen. So then to do that, I need to be constantly bringing praise to the Father. If there is one thing that can be said about me and everyone, the youth that I can influence, anybody I can influence, we will be known as a people that can touch heaven, a people that can pray. When there is an issue where there is a problem, there is a, a disaster, a crisis, Say, you know what? You need to call those guys over at the abiding place because they can pray. They can touch heaven. They can see change come. We must be the answer for our generation. We must. It's not an option. First and foremost, there is no other way. There is one way to heaven through Jesus Christ. And secondly, I don't hear too many other people lifting up their voice and crying out. Who will go? The Father asks, who will go for me? I'll say, Father, I go. Father, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I'll go wherever you want me to go. Use me. Father, use me. Lord Jesus, as long as I have your presence, as long as I have your anointing, that is all I need, Father. It's all I need. Father, you are all I need. Father, in this day and in this generation where men have turned their face and shake their fist at you, we say, Father, we are your people. Father, we are your people. And we know that you have a great plan and a great purpose for our lives. You have a great plan and a great purpose for this nation. Father, we bring it before you now. We petition you now, Father. We stand in the gap and we say, Come and move by your Spirit. Father, strengthen us yet one more time. Father, strengthen us yet one more time. Your mighty power be demonstrated. Your glory be demonstrated in this city. Father, raise us up as a light. Father, raise us up as a beacon. 
to be salt to make everyone thirsty for you, to be a light that shines in the darkness, representing you, Lord Jesus. Father, we must have you. Father, we must have you. We ask you to come and move by your Spirit in a mighty way. Come and move by your Spirit. Lord Jesus, we thank you for a great outpouring of your Holy Ghost and fire, for the life-changing presence of Jesus Christ. We ask you to use us. Father, we are hungry for you. Father, again tonight we vow our lives with a fresh consecration and a fresh determination to do one thing, and that is to set our sight on heaven, to live our lives for Jesus Christ. Take us deeper. Father, that we may know the height, the breadth, the length, the depth, the love of Christ Jesus. Father, this is our heart. This is our cry. That your glory be revealed. That your glory be revealed. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Belando Ramambora, Mamma, Sibre, Lava, Sica, Lavanda, Ramandande, Livid, Sipre, Vive, Sapra, Mamma, Sica, Livid, Sigre, Vive, Ramam, Brela, La Lamanda, Ramana, Sica, Lava, Sica, Livid, Sigre, Vive, 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 Sigre, God has spoken so many things. The Holy Spirit has spoken so many things. Just, so, just from the beginning of this year, amazing direction, amazing vision, impartations that I know each and every person in here has received. Remind yourself of those things. I hope that everybody has a place where they write down the things that God speaks to them. I was going through that today and earlier this week, going through, I've got my list of, of notes, right? From, from services, from things God has spoken to me, from studies, going through and be like, my goodness, wow, that's powerful. Remind yourself of these things. Always keep the vision before you. Always keep what God has spoken before you. God's word is so precious. If God would come, if, think about this. God would so honor you to come and, and give a word specifically for you. How many people have you received a specific word from God? Okay, what an honor. God would come and speak a specific word to you through, through the written word, through the vessel, the mouth, mouthpiece, whoever it was that spoke out, maybe someone that came through, a ministry that came through. And it, I can't tell you, there's been my life, formative words, right? Because God, I know, I didn't hear it as the word of man. I heard it for what it truly was, the word of God. Remind yourself of those things because I guarantee that if you started searching them out, things you wrote down or you started jarring your memory a little bit, what God has spoken to you, it's powerful. It's so powerful. I mean, it's, if you look at what God has put in this place, the tangible presence, I mean, I, 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 I know I keep saying it, but I just, it's overwhelming to me. It's such an honor. It's just such an honor that God would grace us with his presence in this place to have a, a, a sanctuary that we get to come in Mm. And every time the blood of Jesus is there, I mean, it's, there's no excuse. If you mess up, if there was a, a, a trip up, if you sinned, if you, if, even if you did the most vile thing you can imagine, at the door, Jesus' blood is there. And with a true and sincere heart of repentance, he's there to wash you, cleanse you, and to give you his righteousness so that you can come in and by the Holy Spirit then offer up these praises to the Father and have that interaction with the realm of heaven. The realm of heaven. It's what every person is looking for. It's what every person so longs for. They don't know how to express it. They try through many different avenues and venues and, and forms. And we have it right here to be able to step into the realms of heaven and not just here to live in the realms of heaven. Pastor Mark has been provoking me to good works because I, if you've been watching him, you've seen recently he has stepped into a realm where he lives in heaven. He lives there. You know, we talk about it. Yes, I'm living in heaven. I can feel the presence of God. Okay, honestly, I don't have that all the time. I can step over. I know how to, I know I've got, I've got the Holy Ghost who can hook me up with that flow and that river and that, that realm of heaven. 
but I, I have to say I'm not living there 100% of the time. The way I feel right now, just I, I'm sh- I, my body's shaking and it just feels good and I feel loved and it's just like, it's just awesome. I don't really have words for it, but it feels really nice, okay? I want to live in that all day long. And I know the Father is not withholding any good thing. I know that that is what he has purposed. So I have a goal. I have a goal. And I would invite you to run after this goal as well, to live in heaven, to live in heaven. Why would you not want to? Why would you want to be stuck in sadness, depression, anxiety, fear, whatever, whatever you're, you're stuck in? Heaven, man. The goodness. The goodness of God. That's where I want to be. It's where I want to live. It's where I want to dwell. Because it feels good. It feels absolutely wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. So let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you every single day in everything you say and everything you do. If you say something you shouldn't have, quickly repent and say, Holy Spirit, I want to be more sensitive to you so that everything that comes out of my mouth is consecrated. Now, that's, that's, a, heavy, that's a heavy level of speaking where everything that comes out of your mouth is what God would be communicating. Hey, that's a mouthpiece that the Father can use. That is a mouthpiece that God is looking for. Let me assure you of this. Father has many things that he wants to say. He's looking for a vessel that he can speak through. And I am dedicated and consecrated to being a vessel. And I know that every single one of you are. Let's go after the things of God. Let's be serious about laboring for the, for the, the things of heaven to be revealed in this county. There is no reason for us not to shake this city. Father has purposed it. Father has purposed it. Do you think for one second that God says, no, I'm not going to do anything in San Diego right now? No, of course not. He is ready to move. He is moving. He's looking for somebody, anybody to cooperate. And I know each and every one of you are putting your hand to the plow and you are working and you are laboring in the kingdom and it is awesome. You are to be commended. But at the same time, we have a lot of work to do. Let's press into this thing. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Cry out to God to give you the spirit of prayer and supplication. To, to put that, that intercession, that desire to really labor. And as, as Paul described, a woman in birth pains, right? That's some pretty intense, that's some pretty intense uh, expression there. But what is it doing? It's bringing forth these new things. It's birthing a move of God. Crying out for a move of God in San Diego. That the fire of God would burn. That the light of heaven would shine in this place. Would shine upon the city. That the conviction of God would be so heavy. Everywhere we go, people are compelled. What do you, they're compelled to repent. They're compelled to hear this message. This message of salvation. This is where my heart is. This is what my desire is. To truly live for the kingdom. I have no other purpose for living. That's it. I'm doing other things. I went and got educated. I've got a job. Great. Who cares? I have one purpose for living. It is to reveal Jesus Christ to my generation. Father wants to use us, church. He wants to use us. He is there ready to move, to strike. He's looking for someone that will truly take a hold of this and be serious about it. To be serious about it. To labor. To dig deep wells. To dig deep wells in the Spirit. There's something about water that comes out of a deep well. It tastes really good. You drink water that's just real shallow out of a little shallow stream. Might feel a little bit queasy about drinking that. You don't know what might be in there. But you, you drink out of a deep well. Yeah, that's good stuff. The Holy Spirit wants to cultivate deep wells inside of each and every one of us. He's ready to do it. He's ready to supply it. He is the one that brings forth that unction. Are we going to be willing to labor? To labor, because it is a labor. Digging is not a very relaxing chore. Digging requires some effort. 
digging a well, you're going deep and you're moving a lot of dirt. Praise God we don't have to look to our own ability. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood. It's not in the arm of flesh. But at the same time, there's a consecration that will always result in action. Works. Faith without works, faith without action, it's dead. What did James say? Show me your faith. I'll show you my faith by my works, right? Where's the action? Where's the action? Where's the action? God's, God speaks every service. He speaks every service in amazing ways. And I know it's, Pastor Mark was, was saying, it's like, a little, it's like a little taste. Okay, you like heaven? Do you? Do you like heaven? Are you willing to be consecrated so that you can live in heaven? There's always the invitation. It is always there. We have to decide, what is it that we are truly going to live for? I'm living for Jesus. I'm living for Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your presence here. If anyone needs prayer, if you want to feel heaven and touch heaven, touch the, the realms of God like you never have before, it is available. Come and I will pray for you. If you are sick in your body, if you're just tired, you just need to feel refreshed, guess what? The refresher is here. If you need to feel encouraged, the encourager is here. If you need healing, the healer is here. We are so honored to have the presence of the Almighty God here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Keep your life a sacred place. Please, if you want to experience God, if you want heaven in your life, you must have a sacred place. I started off by saying, let your life be an altar. Let it be a sacrifice. God demanded that altar to be a pure and perfect setup, a pure and perfect place. And he demanded that the sacrifice be, be perfect as well. Let there be complete consecration in your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't want anybody to leave here without feeling the presence of Jesus Christ because it is here, it is here, it is here. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to overwhelm every heart. Close, everybody, close your eyes and lift your hands. I'm, I'm compelled. Look, I, I feel great. I could have sat back there on the drums for the next three hours with my hands up, just uh, raptured away. But the love of God is compelling me to go to you because you need to be strengthened. You are the representation of Christ Jesus for San Diego, California. You must be strengthened to do a good job of that. There are too many bad representatives of Jesus. There are too many wrong representations. We don't want to focus on that. Rather, we want to have these representatives representing correctly. Does that make sense? There's only one way you can do that, and that is by touching heaven. That is by being filled with the wonderful, overwhelming presence of the Lord Jesus. It's available here. It's available here. Just close your eyes and lift your hands. The realms of heaven are right here. They're right here. Don't let anything in your life be more important than Jesus Christ. Please, don't let anything in your life be more important than Jesus Christ. Believe me. He is more than enough. He's more important. Father, I love you so much. Father, I come to you right now on behalf of every person in the abiding place. And I ask you to touch them. Father, I ask you for an increase of hunger. Father, I ask you that every person feel right now this wonderful, tangible presence that you have graced us with here in this place. Father, that we would be determined to every time come into your presence to receive. 
Oh, you're so wonderful, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful, Lord Jesus. Usara makati vi sepri vi sikri vi.